100% full information for everyone on the desk. Uh, PL in their second match against Tuskers have banned out the Cerberus and the Bargest. Uh, and Tuskers? Tuskers Co. have banned the Slipnir and the Fiend again, making an appearance there. Yes, well, they really do really don't really don't want the fiend involved in these matches well, at all. Well, they, they know that PL has access to yeah. to quantities of them. I think that that's probably a, a consequential thing there. We we have seen the fiend fielded uh, to great effect uh, earlier uh, last last weekend. Um, it, it's a it's a powerful ship. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we saw what it, what the kind of effect it had. I mean, uh, even if it's not dealing damage, it still dictates a lot of what the other team has to do to just stop it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the match where we saw it last, I mean, one of those newts or nosses that the Balgorn was, it could have gone into a different ship and it could have made a difference, but because they had to respond to it. And that's the best way to break up someone's plan is to make them react to you as opposed to them uh, doing whatever it is that they were going to do. So Tusker's effectively taking that out of Pandemic's toolbox. Uh, and and, and I'm not, that's not to say that uh, they don't have access to other Alliance tournament ships. Surely Pandemic does. They've won five Alliance tournaments and they do have uh, a steady stable of available and exploding uh, weapons. Yeah, they, they're yeah. good at that. <laughs> Tinkang, hop in. Uh, what I'm interested in is, uh, so we're, they saw them ban the, the comp that just beat them. So obviously that's something that tus Tuskers can't use. So I'm really looking forward to what, what other uh, 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 fleet that they're going to bring here because this is, as we've been mentioning last weekend, this is where the real fun stuff comes out. This is where mm. we actually get to peek under the, the curtain here and see the inner workings of some of this really deep meta uh, as we get into the end point of the tournament. And Tusker's uh, historically very good at that. Very strong brawlers when it comes into the fight, but also fairly successful at reading what's going to be coming down and, and compensating for that by fielding the right ships to deal with the comps that they're likely to see. Uh, PL, uh, tons can be said about their performance in, in past ATs. Obviously, they have incredibly skilled pilots. They have... They have access to, to bunches of, of tech uh, that, that might not be as available to, to other teams. They got some smug, and they have a reason to be smug. I mean, they, they've won several of these tournaments just flat out. They are, they are, they are very good at what they do. Uh, and, you know, some say that's kind of like a you know, bravado, but, you know, when you back it up, it's not. And uh, uh, sometimes they obviously, you know, they have their pluses and minuses in good years and bad years, but... This is definitely where we're going to see, uh, uh, you know, uh, the pedigree of these two teams really, you know, kick out. I mean, uh, the like for example, the last match we saw where he just barely boundary violated a couple of degrees differently, that, that would have been their match. Mm -hmm. I think um, because this is a series now as well, uh, we get to see some interesting things um, to do with whether, you know, there's always the chance that that early match. They won't bring their absolute best, or they won't. They won't playing their you know trump card at this point because they're in the winners bracket. It's the first round, the first match of a series. Now they're they're one down. Maybe they decide to do something different. Maybe they still think we're in the winners bracket. The worst that can happen here is we we drop we drop down. And we have to play an extra match. It, and on top of that, you've got to add in the, the the fact that they've had a very short amount of time to get this match oh, together. It's, it's not quite the worst thing. Uh, you'll remember that the team approaching the championship from the elimination bracket starts at a one game loss mm -hmm. uh, in the in the final best of five. Uh, yeah, in the final best of five. So uh, it, I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, there certainly is a bit of a safety net, but it's mm. not it's not a great safety net. Oh, definitely, net. definitely. <laughs> it's a couple I'm, of threads. Yeah. And, and you go in against Tuskers in the finals. If you if you drop down and make it all the way there, and you're one game down, well, they're one game down right now. That's very true, but what if they bring their best up now, show their hand, and then by the time they get to the final, everyone knows it? Well, I mean, um, this is, this is <laughs> I mean, the, the, what, what I want to see as a viewer is definitely to go to three, because yeah. then, you know, we've got a lot of fun stuff and explodings and back and forth, but um, as we've seen the last couple of weeks, uh, we've seen some kind of minor stumblings from Pandemic Legion, so... Uh, you know, like I said, three degrees differently. He would have been inside the uh, the, the arena. Would have been their match. But um, it's going to be real interesting to see what he, we got here. But Tuskers have been so on point. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I I think both uh, both PL and Tuskers still have their flagships as well. Uh, PL's flagship is that Navy Scorpion. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And yeah. This is we may see flagships coming into play. In this. And I think Tuskers has a. I I'm going to look at, over here. I think does Tuskers are they flying a a, a flagship? Is that no? Do they have no no flagship or 
Both of them have flagships, but no, not, not in this. Has elected to use them. Oh, well, we'll get to that. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, pr- predictions from the desk. Who um, takes this match? I think I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to stick with uh, Tuskers for this one. I definitely think that we've pushed Pandemic Legion to a corner, and uh, they're going to come with something weird. I'm going to go with Pandemic Legion. Pandemic Legion with something weird. Uh, c- certainly, it-, it will be interesting to see what they take and how it performs. We will go to Moderator and Zarvox Terral in the booth for this match, the second in a best of three match. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, match 123B in Alliance Tournament 14. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the frontal commentary position. I'm here with moderator. Pandemic Legion has brought double floon, Eos, a Neros, double Sfipple, double Blackbird, a Malice, and a Purifier. Meanwhile, Tuskers have brought a Crucifier, two Osprey Navy issues, a pair of Orthruses, a Claim of her Lynx, a Flycatcher, a Scimitar, interestingly, an Onyx, and a Jackdaw. We can see that by the initial warp end, Peel and Tuskers are very close on top of each other. Peel's going to want to take that to get on top of uh, Tuskers initially, rush them down with those uh, Spiples, get the tackle, primary whatever they have, and just go for the jugular. I mean, Tuskers really want to be pulling range and trying to screen off the incoming tackle. You can see the logistics shifts is actually at risk. The Claymore about to get tackled. The Scimitar is pulling range nicely, but these... Yeah, uh, this is going to be the call for Tuskers. They have to kill the Oneros off the bat, and that's the one good thing that they have from the initial spawn. They have to kill the Oneros before the Repots get on top of him, and then they can work on the Blackbirds, then they can work on the Swiples and the Purifiers. Tracking Disruptor is not going to do too much to the Swiple. They need to kill the Oneros before their ASBs, for the, before the Rapid Heavies run out, and before the Oneros can get too many Rep Drones. We're seeing... Them. Big damage being focused onto that Aeneros, but he is not hard tackled at all, so he's going to try and uh, pull as much range as he can. The Scimitar, on the other hand, was scrammed. The Scimitar of Skylar Hawk was scrammed, but is now not focusing a little bit of damage onto him. He seems to be doing fine. Will he get his M-Dub back on and try to pull range? We'll see in a moment. Yeah, that Aeneros is just holding in about 20% armor, and so far being able to get caught back up. Skylar Hawk now hard tackled. The Aeneros still surviving. With the hard tackle, the Spipples are going to want to get on top of him, get the Malice on top for the Newts, and... Without the Tuskers having killed Pandemic Legion's logistics in the first reload, I really favor Pandemic Legion. Yeah, and it really looks as though this Scimitar will go down. There's no way he's going to be able to pull range. He is surrounded and hard tackled and taking huge damage. Once his, once his XLASB shield booster runs out of charges, it is going to be all over for him unless something crazy happens and he can pull out of range. The, the Lynx ship, the Claymore, also being scrammed. So after they finish off this Scimitar, if in fact they do, they're probably going to switch onto the Claymore. Yeah, either that or some of the Orthruses or Ospreys, if they can get a tackle of that, they do have hard tackle on the Claymore. I'd like getting rid of the Lynx. Unfortunately for Tuskers, they didn't kill the Oneros in the first reload, and that was really the linchpin to winning the setup. It's kind of painful to say that only two minutes into the match, but really that was their victory condition with these two mirrors coming up against each other. The Oneros had to break. He didn't. The Scimitar is now going to fall. I mean, what's their best knows. move then? When they realize that they don't have hard tackle onto the Oneros, uh, they're not able to finish him off in a single reload. The Scimitar, as we had said of Skylar Hawk, probably about to go down on Tusker's side. So one side is now without logistics. I mean, what were Tuskers to do then when they realize that they can't break Oneros? What do you think they should do next? After that, you have to kill Reptrons because you still have to get on top of the Oneros. The Light Missile Comp doesn't have enough fall. damage. He has to fall. The Light Missile Comp doesn't have enough damage to break through the Blackbirds or either the Swipe you could maybe kill a purifier, but it's not really worth the time just to get that one bomber off the grid. Yep. You have to work away at the rep bots, then kill the Oneros. Unfortunately, Tuskers weren't able to get a hard tackle, and it's questionable if they even had a hard tackle ship in this comp. Their Orthrus is now scrammed and, and webbed. webbed. Very, very bad news for any Orthrus. He is, in fact, XLASB, so he'll be taking for a while. And in the meantime, this Oneros is now taking damage, although not hard tackled. They are really trying as our moderator had said, to get this Oneros down, it's crucial for, to, for them to win this match. Yeah, and with this Oneros now popping, it I don't know if they have the number of light missile ships remaining on field to kill the Oneros. I mean, it might but not. But as we say that, he's got about half hull, armor's breaking, so if these rep bots can catch up with him, They're just maybe, holding maybe him alive, and they did uh, t- take down a, an Orthrus at the same time, so Tusk is now without a Scimitar, now without Now some are on top of the Malice. It's a bit of a strange choice. They all need to be on top of the Oneros. Maybe they are the Oneros bots, not quite sure, but the Oneros now just in a sliver of armor and about half hole remaining. Uh, 
I mean, yeah. he may fall, but it is going to take them quite a long time. And in the meantime, the jackdaw uh, of Dana Walker, of Tuskers, has now been scrammed and webbed and now being focused down. Yeah. See, the Oneros is now down. Finally, now they have to kill the Spiples, work away at the Spiples, work away at the Blackbirds. Try to keep, the, keep that Crucifier alive. If you can keep those Fleet Typhoons missile guidance disrupted, that's really great. The Malice, not that great of a primary. Too good at staying alive. And then Tuskers is thankfully taking some of uh, the uh, advice from the desk here, working away at the Blackbirds and a little bit of the Spiple. The support, the support of PL is really on point. You can see that the Orthrus, this Orthrus of uh, Hoodie Mafia was scrammed and webbed just as the... the the Orthrus of Anuka went down. So they're already prepping for their next target. The, they know that the, the Orthrus of Anuka is about to go down. Scrams and webs of this of PL support immediately shutting down the Orthrus of Hoodie Mafia. And as you can see, he's now primed and ready to go with all of that tackle on him. There's nothing he can do and is about to fall. Yeah, speaking of things that are about to fall, we're about to lose a Spiple and a Blackbird, but Tuskers is just trading way too slowly. Um, even as I say that, the Spiple and Blackbird are just barely holding and hold with those Repots and Everything is now on rapid reload. The jams from the Blackbirds are going to be on top of the Onyxes and Navy Ospreys, as well as the Flycatcher. I'm not sure if Tuskers can even lock anything. Are they even going to have the damage? I mean, they, there's no there's no logistics on either side. So if if Tuskers are able to maintain range and not allow any more of their cores, of which they don't have very many, um, to get tackled, they may be able uh, to inflict some serious damage on PL, but it's definitely looking... Oh, then there's a Blackbird down of Fel Felipidos. Yeah, he, Flop Flopidus. Flopidus, yeah. thank you. Flycatcher thank you. now having no jams on top of him, but they need to work through the Swipel eventually. Wow. They do get him, but okay. Claymore is now taking appreciable damage, like from the Fleet Typhoons. Tuskers is kind of in a hard place. They need to break through either an Eos or a Fleet Typhoon if they want to catch up on points. Just killing the Swipels and the Blackbirds and the support won't be enough in time. And I don't think they've got enough on the field to actually do it in four minutes. So. They're, tr they're trying, so they've just now got, so the Claymore was doing his best to get well out of range, but it's just been in, just been scrammed, webbed, I believe, by the Swipple of Casper. Always with that hero tackle, shuts down the Claymore, makes him unable to move away. And now, as you can see, he's taking va uh, vastly more damage and will probably fall. In the process though, they have lost Doom, Casper, uh, himself is probably going to go down any moment. Will they will they be able to get the Claymore in time before Casper loses his tackle on that Claymore? Yeah, they're doing an excellent job of getting all their tackle on top of Suleiman. Tackle is on point. Yeah, soon tackle as one game target is, is about to go game down, is absolutely on point they're for Pandemic. straight away scram webbing the next target. Yeah, the Purifier about to drop. Wow, and the Claymore. The Claymore goes down. Is down. Yeah. Huge advantage from PL now with the Lynx off the field of Tuskers. And Casper is not even dead. He's probably going to go scram someone else. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Yeah, I so spoke too soon. Now they have to kill the Blackbird and work away at the Eos while somehow not getting tackled by the Malice. And the Malice, it appears, is on top of Latronicus. Those newts are actually just going to completely yep. shut down. Latronicus, Latronicus now hard tackled by the Malice. He won't be going anywhere. The Fleet Typhoons are going to get on top of him. And that'll be it for him. Looks like a fair, like such a huge point advantage. The DPS on the field is vastly in PL's favor. And they have no links. Uh, sorry, Tuskers have no links. They have no support at all. That Navy Osprey, whilst not tackled, is taking, but they seem to have switched off the off, off of the Onyx of Latronicus over to the Navy Osprey of Teibel. And at this point, I actually might like killing the Blackbird and then the Malice. You realize that you're not going to be able to win the match, so you might as well inflict as much damage. You don't know how many Malice's Pandemic Legion might have, though presumably they're going to have more than just the one. So, they can't really win the match. I like killing the Blackbird, get the jams off the field, then kill the Malice. I mean, they now have no, no nothing to really uh, hard tackle the side of Tuskers. Is that going to make a big difference? The fact that they're, the Floons are going to be uh, much less able to apply their damage to the Onyx and the two Nos... Uh, oh, and just as I say that... It looks as though the Malice did actually get some hard tackle onto the Navy Osprey, and as you can see, immediately the damage in coming onto his ship has gone through the roof, and he will fall any second. Yeah, there goes the Navy Osprey. Of Bit of a tough position one. for Tuskers now. Yeah, Tuskers is uh, just getting gored by uh, Pandemic Legion, those missiles just piercing right through them. Yeah, but you know, trade the Blackbird out. Maybe they'll all just micro jump off the field again. So you never know what's going to happen in matches like this. I mean, we might see all three. Now, uh, Dunkool, cool, Blue Melon, Destoyer just jumping themselves out. You never know. Okay, it's happened for a little while now, but... Oh, the Black... Spoke a bit too soon. It took until now for the Blackbird to fall. Yeah, the Malice now scrammed. Critically, Tackle has fallen from the Navy Osprey and immediately jumps back onto his micro warp drive. Yeah, he's going to burn away hard, try to stay alive, but you can see Taking the cruise missiles coming on top of that Navy Osprey. A lot of damage. And his ASBs are just barely keeping him up. That Crucifier needing to put his 
Guidance Disruptors on top of both Dan Cool and Blue Melon. Maybe he only has the one and he put his mid slots on the Tracking Disruptors, just the normal missile or gun ones rather, onto yep. the Swiples. Yep. Not useful now. But yeah, they're just chewing away at the Malice, and I don't even know if they can do it in the next minute and a half. I mean, at the end of the day here, the DPS from the side of Tuskers is really not enough to kill anything. Uh, maybe perhaps the Malice, but most likely not. So it doesn't look like there's any way for Tuskers to come back from this. Yeah, what do you think, Zarvox, of Tuskers choosing to go with this comp? No AT ships, not bringing your flagship. You're up one point in the series. How do you I mean, feel about that? I mean, maybe later on, maybe we're going to see some brand new comp like you were talking about. Like, these guys are really going to save their their end game comp for the end maybe there's their flagship and their um the flagships and potential at ships form an integral part of that of that setup maybe we haven't seen it yet they don't want to give it away until the last moment who knows it's some high high level uh, uh meta gaming here at the alliance tournament that yeah. navy osprey is in fact about to go down no damage left now uh, on the side of tuskers really yeah i would like to see what they're going to do especially in the third round the winner of this is guaranteed second place. So you go from having a total of seven guaranteed prize ships of each kind, so seven crews of seven frigates to up to 12. And then you go up another point in the grand final series. So winning the next match puts you in a great position. Losing it makes you go down to the loser's final. You have to play another best of three just to work your way into that grand finals where you're already behind. Mm -hmm. I want to see one of these two teams in the next match bring everything and close it out. And with that, we're going to talk to the desk to see what they have to say. so far let's just keep it up that's right we can't have anyone freak out out there okay we've got to keep our composure we've come too far there's too much to lose it's not just keep And PL goes 1-1 versus the Tuskers uh, in their second match of that best of three. Uh, <laughs> chocolate rain must have been flying. Rain chocolate must have been flying there because there was no hard tackle. That's not a pickup line. That's the opposite. <laughs> Sorry, Rain. Uh, Lebowski, tell me about the about the performance there. PL flying a, a fleet comp that looks almost exactly the same as the one we saw uh, flying in the other match, uh, yeah, actually. Um, a really formidable comp, it seems, and uh, I think Tuskers like, rightly realized that their one chance was to take that Aeneros down in their first uh, first reload cycle, and then, sadly, as soon as that didn't happen, that was that was kind of it, and it was uh, just mopping up from then on. It was, it was, I'm sad, basically. I shouldn't have mentioned my awesome win streak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah where's, you get what you pay for. Where's the wins, Lebowski? I'm writing across <laughs> on my page. <laughs> so, um, Ryan? Yeah, critically here, you saw them ban out the stuff that was giving so much trouble in their first match. Uh, the application uh, from Fleet Foons is nowhere near as good as the Vargas. So, uh, them trying to headshot the lo logistics again, didn't, they couldn't, they pushed them pretty low, but if you don't get that initial, that initial kill, it, it's just, you, you've basically, as moderator said, the imminent genius that he is, uh, is that, that that's it. I mean, it's just like a mop-up at that point. I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting and fun to watch, but you don't get that critical first wipe of that Lodgy. It's just a, it's just a slow loss. Now, now, talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, people not paying attention might not know what it means getting to the first reload and, and, and how much the timing matters. Uh, what exactly was Moderator talking about? Well, uh, the, the first reload that we have is, is all the ships that they have, they're using what's called rapid lights and rapid heavies, which are these, these very high DPS weapons in a very short period of time, but incredibly long reload. So it's, it's like having a machine gun with this huge drum on it, and you fire all the guns and bullets, and you, know, you, you do a lot of damage, but it takes a really long time to slap another drum onto that. And um, 
that's basically what we had here. They gambled that they could get that logistics ship, that ship repairing their team, down before they had to reload. And uh, the first match we saw that work because of the application that those ships, they're basically designed to use those weapons. The ships that were banned out and then what they came with instead, not the best at it. They're good, but not great. And this is the difference between pushing it into structure and blowing it up and then surviving with like 10%, 5% hull and uh, just weathering the storm. Ooh. And of course, us seeing the Malice again take the field there. Uh, and, and again, proving to be quite a formidable hull, uh, that, that AT tank. Uh, yeah, just, it's... The, with the with the way it has its NOS bonus built into it, which is the old style, which is that it just gets cap. Um, it can run a tank, it can tackle you, and you can't get rid of it. It's it's like a limpet. It just will attach itself to your body, and there's nothing you can do. And the only way that you can get a malice off of you once it's tackled you is if it decides to do something else. So uh, they are they are brutal. The uh, the only thing that could probably be a better uh, way to tackling somebody would be hit them in the knee, kneecaps with a baseball bat. I mean, it's like they're they're horrible. CCP does not condone <laughs> that type of action in order to tackle your opponents <laughs> while playing in the AT. Uh, do we, Lebowski? No, we don't. We don't. And it was interesting that I saw Tuskers again, um, or not again, sorry, but again the. Malice being shot quite early on in the game there. I, I don't know whether that was kind of throwing in the towel early and thinking, well, well, let's try and get this as well. Or maybe, I mean, there's always that the chance that someone just didn't have a target at that point and wasn't in optimum to apply to what they should be shooting at and was just shooting the Malice a bit. But yeah, it seems strange to me that you would you would focus any fire on it um, so early on. When... Well, I mean, that's even more of a risk. You, I mean, uh, with other weapons, like, you know, it takes not a, a very insignificant amount of time to reload. With rapid lights, rapid heavies, you shooting means that that's less ammo in your magazine and Ooh. you're just getting, you're just, you're, you're, you're pushing that reload timer closer and closer. So it could be a lack of discipline. Uh, but uh, again, uh, this is what I was expecting. I mean, uh, uh, if you push PL into a corner, they're going to come at you with their best. And now it's one and one. This next match between the two of them is going to be dynamite. Yeah. The next match between PL and Tusker is, of course, the final uh, undefeated bracket match of Alliance Tournament 14. Uh, after this, uh, every match that you see will feature at least one team that has been into the elimination bracket. Uh, and, of course, the winner of the match, uh, the final match between uh, PL and Tusker will be moving into the championships no matter what. Uh, they, they will enjoy a one-game lead there in that best of five series, uh, which is set to commence uh, tomorrow, if I read the schedule correctly off of this handy piece of paper, uh, tomorrow at uh, 1700 Eve time. Uh, 1700 Eve time when the championships uh, will take place. Uh, that's set to be an amazing match, and of course there are quite a lot of player events focused on uh, getting people together to watch on big screens in public places. Uh, the, one that I, on. the one that I know of for sure is being run by Apophony and the Bristol Pet in Birmingham, England, but uh, there's bound to be one, uh, bound to be uh, viewing parties happening in your area. Check out evemeet.net uh, to see what's coming up uh, in your local jurisdiction. Not .com? Not .com. It's no. .net. Okay. Uh, 